Hey guys, this is like take seven because it's so hard not to spoil this movie. First of all, right off the bat, you do not want to get spoiled to this movie. We will be dropping one single spoiler, I hope, which is we're going to be naming one character who wasn't confirmed as a killer, okay? If that makes sense. Because, trust me, you're, you're going to be thrown off the scent multiple times. You're not going to have a clue who's the killer by the end, okay? So, this one particular person piqued my interest, kind of, um, well, not really, like, they were the weakest character in my opinion, but I, I want to talk about them, and I'll tell you right now that uh, they are not, or honestly, actually, after watching it, I kind of feel like maybe they did have some involvement, but um, as far as the character's knowledge goes, he seems innocent, and I'm talking about the movie nerd guy who knows all the rules about horror movies. So, yeah, he, I, personally, I have, I promise you I have not seen these movies, but I'm basically telling you right now, I bet you the horror, I bet you the movie nerd guy is going to be a killer in the second movie. I'm calling it right now, okay? I just have a feeling about him. So, yeah, basically this is about a small, peaceful town with a bunch of teenagers who go to school and they, they're all stereotypical character tropes. That's how all horror movies start. And it's basically, there's this killer named Ghostface <coughs> who calls his victims, because I'm you can use the pronoun his, it's not necessarily his, but the, the phone voice is a masculine voice. So Ghostface basically is this stealthy and meticulous killer who is a completely normal human being as far as we know. No supernatural powers or anything. Seems a little bit supernatural dead by daylight, but in this film, just a regular person. So... <clears throat> He basically calls his victims and then toys with them and stalks them and is extremely stealthy, creeps them out, and is extremely sadistic, basically. Like, th these villains act, these are the kind of villains I prefer. I feel like maybe modern horror movies are getting a little bit wa watered down. Um, because there's some serious subject matter in these old ones, okay? I watched the Elm Street uh, franchise, that's all about pedophilia, basically. And in this movie, there's a lot of references to rape. Um, so, these are some real, these are some real bad guys, if it's a guy. Um, because, honestly, you're not, you're never gonna know, okay? You'll know by the end, you'll definitely know what's going on by the end, but throughout the film, you're, you're not gonna be on the scent at all. You're not gonna have any clue who the killer is. So, that's by far the most interesting thing about the movie, is the fact that you're along for the ride in this murder mystery. And, yeah. Just uh, the acting as well. I want to say right now, in a, in a silly, kind of goofy, campy movie like this, the acting is really, really above average in my opinion. Um, because there are some scenes that are, just wouldn't work if the actors weren't as, you know, competent as they are, basically. And they're not the greatest actors ever. But um, I still felt they were above average. And they kind of sold the experience for me. And, but I also love the self-aware humor. Um, you know, they have plenty of references to other franchises. I think there was like Hellraiser in there. Um, there's a lot. I, I feel stupid because I have I, I need, I have some retro horror homework to do clearly because a lot of references I didn't get, a lot of celebrity names were dropped or actor names that I didn't understand who they were. So I have a lot of homework to do. I'm definitely going to rewatch this one. I'm going to like it even more the second time I watched it because the first time I watched it, which is just now. You know, it, there were some bumpy moments for me. Like, I felt like some of the characters were kind of weak, the the movie guy. But honestly, by the end of it, I think everyone had a purpose. The movie guy was basically supposed to represent the viewer. It's basically me. I don't want to admit that because I don't like him, but it is basically me. Someone who watches horror movies a lot and talks about the stereotypes and stuff. So, unfortunately, that's basically me. Um, even the ghost face killer themselves is honestly a little bit like me too, which kind of scared me a little bit. I'm really glad, I'm really glad I have good parents so I didn't go down the road that they did. If you didn't know, I am diagnosed ASPD, and by the end of the film, he does the, not he, again, it's, it's so hard to talk about it, the killer does admit that they're a psychopath, and it is clear as day that they're a psychopath, so if you're wondering, don't at me, because the difference between a psychopath and a sociopath is I don't really feel anything for people, but psychopaths actively gain pleasure from hurting others. So, 
it was a little bit scary. It's like maybe in another universe I could have ended up like Ghostface. And honestly, that's a scary thought to think about. So I don't even want to talk about that again. I'm going to remember not to bring that up again. I don't like thoughts like that. I think those are dark, evil thoughts. They don't help anyone. So, yeah, honestly though, Scream, very fun movie. Lots of self-aware humor. It's just got something for everyone. Even if you're not a horror fan or a slasher fan, it's just got charm. It's got charisma. Um, and like I said, some of the weaker characters like the... The movie nerd guy represents the viewer. The uh, boyish police guy actually kind of got dropped off a little bit, but honestly, I ended up liking him by the end of it. Mostly because they always they always portray men in these retro horror movies so badly, in my opinion. I mean, they probably portray women badly as well. In my opinion, some of these retro horror movies, women are kind of naive and clueless, and then the men are kind of creepy and um, aggressive, you know? So. He was kind of a breath of fresh air, that one police guy, even though he didn't really have a purpose. And also the, the reporter woman I also thought was a pretty strong character as well. Lots of intrigue with her, thought the acting was great, like I said, and it has lots of moral, morally gray stuff in there. So, a lot to think about with Scream, definitely not disposable, definitely gonna watch it again. Thanks so much for watching. 10 out of 10, highly recommend Scream.